Chad Gable is a potential free agent, and he has drawn the attention of both WWE and AEW. The headline, you know, it is what it is there. But this was posted up to the website earlier on today by Josh Nason. According to recent reporting by Fightful, Gable's current WWE deal is set to expire soon. In this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer reports that WWE has made an excellent offer to keep Gable. Meltzer adds that if Gable's deal expires, there are key people within AEW that are pushing Gable to Tony Khan. Fightful Sean Ross Sapp stated that he has also heard about internal discussions within AEW about Gable, but did not have an update on his current contractual status. There have been zero indications to this point that Gable is leaving. Gable is currently involved in a heavily pushed storyline with WWE Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn, and he'll be challenging Zayn for the title at next weekend's Clash at the Castle. The 38-year-old Gable began in the WWE system in 2013 after signing a developmental deal following his outstanding run as an amateur and a very brief stint on the indie circuit. Gable has held the WWE Raw and SmackDown Tag Team titles in addition to the NXT Tag Team title during his career. If I'm WWE, I do not want to let Chad Gable go. And certainly he is not at the level of a Roman Reigns, a Cody Rhodes, somebody of that ilk, Randy Orton. But that's a guy that's got an impeccable record inside and outside the ring. You see his ring work. You see how good he is. There is he's, he's never injured. There's never any drama from him. There's never any trouble. You know, his intensity and training, his work ethic, how he carries himself are all positive examples for the company. And, hey, even WWE trusted he and Otis enough to do a Snickers commercial, so there's that too. But once his in-ring career is over, you know, I bet that Gable has the aptitude to do pretty much just about anything he wants in professional wrestling. In front of the camera, he could be a manager. And one that could take bumps, you know, depending on what, you know, how his career ends. You know, a bumping manager is really important if they're a good one. And he's a menace on the microphone. He's proving he can do that. So could he play an authority figure role down the line if you wanted? He could be absolutely could. Behind the scenes, you know, as a trainer, obviously, he fits the bill. His old tag team partner, Jason Jordan, has flourished in the role of an agent. Maybe he could do that and maybe just be a scout. You know, Jerry Briscoe for years and years would travel around and be the guy that would forge relationships with college coaches like the University of Minnesota's Jay Robinson. And that's what ended up opening the doors and making it a lot easier for people like Shelton Benjamin and Brock Lesnar and many others to slide into the system. And granted, with the NIL deals that they have, with how they go about doing things, you know, things are a little bit different. We know that William Regal is active in going to Japan and scouting talent and looking around for talent. And I'm sure that there are other people there that have their eyes open and pay attention to the independent scene. You know, Steve Carino's kid, Colby, has been on the scene forever. I'm sure Steve pays attention to what's going on there. But, you know, that's another role when it comes to amateur wrestlers or being a liaison for amateur wrestlers coming in. I think Chad Gable would be somebody I'd really want to hold on to for that purpose as well, too. It's not just about professional wrestling and the performance in the ring in some cases when it comes to these deals. It's about people's personal enjoyment and what makes them happy, what works for them, and also how a company sees somebody. And I think, you know, Chad Gable is just somebody that is very valuable. He's just coming into his own right now. He's had surety G. He's had a lot of nonsense over the course of his career. Things could not be better for him right now. Much like Drew McIntyre in his situation, much like Damian Priest in him in his situation, all people who's, you know, reportedly have, you know, their contracts have been coming up and you know, at the time they have, things couldn't be going any better for them. So I don't see Chad Gable leaving WWE if he is let go for some reason or he is looking to do something different. It's a no-brainer. Tony Khan should not need cajoling or pushing into signing Chad Gable. Will get Gable make a massive difference when it comes to ratings or pay-per-view buys? Probably not, no. But would I really like to see he and Samoa Joe? Yeah, y yes it would. And would he be valuable for AEW for all of the reasons that I just gave you about WWE? Absolutely. Absolutely, that would be the case. Now, moving on, 
to Rhea Ripley and her recovery. Also in the Wrestling Observer newsletter today, Dave Meltzer provided an update. He says, quote, Ripley is rehabbing her shoulder rather than having surgery. Right now, she's not scheduled back for SummerSlam, but we were also told if she heals up faster than expected or if the storyline changes to where they need her for an appearance, it's still possible. If rehab can't mend the shoulder enough, she could need surgery, end quote. In April, Ripley was forced to vacate the Women's World Championship. She cut a promo vowing that when she returned, she would be out for blood and would be coming back for her title, which is now held by Liv Morgan, who is now trying to hold Rhea's former man, at least on screen, Dominic Mysterio, in Liv's hands, going all after Dom, sliming up to him. So SummerSlam is in Cleveland on Saturday, August 3rd. Her, the timing of her injury was really bad because you had this, you know, divide start happening in Judgment Day. You had Damian Priest, who looks like he's going to flip babyface. You had Drew McIntyre. You know, you had Carlito being brought in. You had all these things that were going to be swirling around that were going to probably build to a big crescendo and then blow itself off. And it's unfortunate that Rhea's hurt. Hopefully, rehab does take care of it because... The longer you put off surgery, if the rehab doesn't take, then she's going to be out for a whole lot longer. And that's really disappointing because I really think next year, if you wanted to do it and you built it up right, I don't think it would take much to have Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley close the show at one of the nights of WrestleMania. Now, by that point, Charlotte Flair will be back in on the scene and... Again, I, I would much rather have, uh, I would, as a, as a timer goes off here, I would much rather have Bianca Belair against Rhea Ripley. But again, with Charlotte in the mix, possibly by that point to do Rhea and Charlotte again to close out one of the nights of WrestleMania, I'm sure that's something Charlotte Flair would love to do. When it comes to the actual TV for WWE, SmackDown is tonight from the Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. They were doing advertising, and I'm not sure if anybody saw this, where you could pay a certain amount of money and sit in a skybox with, I don't, Rose Namajunas, I think. I, for, I forget who it is, and like other UFC luminaries. So that all that sort of crossover stuff and figuring out new ways to get more money out of people by having, you know, live on-scene events taking place and all the other gimmicks and, and bells and whistles and all that sort of stuff. TKO, you know, trying to pull out all the stops here. They have added Cody Rhodes to the show. He'll be making an appearance after last week he was splattered all over ringside by AJ Styles after Styles faked his retirement. They have advertised three matches for the show, and two of them seem to be building to tag title matches at Clash at the Castle. Indy Hartwell against Jade Cargill and Johnny Gargano against Grayson Waller. The only other match announced for the show tonight is Angel Garza against Apollo Crews. Also being taped for tonight will be next Wednesday's WWE Speed on X show. It's the number one contenders tournament final match between Tommaso Ciampa and Andrade. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.